Well, saw dude, Impact Tech install for the 2023 Z400. Z400, Z650, Z1000, they're all gonna look very similar. There's gonna be slight variations, but there's some stuff that we need to go over, especially because this does not come with instructions. If you have a Z or even a Ninja, then this is gonna be applicable to you. Number one, let's start from the bottom. Is the crossbar 100% necessary? No. The only reason why I wouldn't install the crossbar is for an instance like this bike, which we'll look at in a second. Not necessary, but recommended. Secondly, this is the all thread, as they call it. There's a, a, a wrong way to do it. Some people put it in, they start threading it, and then it's sticking out far on the left or sticking out far on the right. If you're not comfortable working on your bike, pulling out that, which goes all the way through the engine, can be really scary. So don't be scared of this all thread. We're gonna make it nice and even, and it's gonna look great. And lastly, these are two different sizes, so you need to figure out which way it fits on either side. And one last thing, just because it says no cut, there's a very high chance that it is no cut. There's a slim chance that that's not necessarily true. On this particular 2023 Z400, you do have to cut or remove some things. We'll go over that in just a second. Is the side fairing on the belly here of the Z400. Although some of the Zs come with it, some come without, the brackets still remain, even the ones that come out with the fairing, believe it or not, from the factory, some of them have it and some of them don't. Now, the reason why I took this off is because in this particular model of this Z400, you have to take this off in order to put the little crossbar on. It's gonna go behind the headers. Now, I'm gonna see what it looks like with and see what it looks like without, and then we're gonna choose. Let's go to the other side. Let me show you on this model where you have to make a cut, even though it says that it's a no cut. All right, you see this right here? This is the part of the frame where the cage is gonna be going in. Now let's get, let's back it up here. Okay, see, as you can see, that is the brake side, and we're gonna come right down here, boom. Perfectly exposed, ready for the cage to go right in. But, look at this, see how it's totally exposed? No cut, totally fine. Although this is considered a no cut cage, we're gonna to go to the other side. I'm gonna to prove to you that that's not true. Right in here, that is the same as the other side except I'm gonna either make a cut here to take it off or take off this whole thing. But then you can see my radiator and this fairing is very pretty. I like the way that it looks on the bike, although this is technically a no cut. As you can see right in there, we're gonna have to make a slice here and here to really expose that part of the frame to actually put the cage in. Aim right smack dab in the center of the bike, we have this bolt, okay? That's where this is going to be going through right in here. This is the all thread. Okay, so I already broke the torque here, but there is a 14 mil on this side, a little hex bolt, and then there's a 14 on the other side. On the other side, um, it, you can't see the threads, it's just a bolt, but on this side, you can see the threads and it's a bolt. So I'm gonna see how far I can loosen this. You don't have to hold it on the other side. I've seen videos showing that on the other side in the same exact spot that you have to hold those threads. Um, as it turns out for this one, again, this is a 14 mil. It doesn't seem like you have to. All right, now we are on the other side of the bike and it's spinning. You guys watch, you guys watch right here. I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna hit it and see what happens. Oh, looks like it's coming out. All right, now we know. All right, here is a little trick of the trade. I removed the other end of the all thread, so now it looks just like this. We are going to use this to push it all the way through. And in doing so, it will not allow the engine to move at all because we are immediately to the millimeter replacing the thread that was in there with the new one that we're going to use. So I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna get a little rubber mallet and I'm gonna go bink, 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 bink and push this all the way through to the other side. That is exactly what I would do if I was you, but you're gonna get to watch me do it. Again, I've never even done this before. I'm just following my instincts here. All right, here's my rubber mallet. What you don't wanna do is A, damage the threads, or B, force it through and damage the other side. So believe it or not, nah, okay, I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna go over it. I have my rubber mallet. I suggest a rubber mallet, or if you don't, put a towel on, on the end of a giant wrench and hit it. But uh, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna damage the threads on this side, and you sure as heck don't wanna damage them 
on this side. So I'm going to show you from both angles. Let me get it set up here. I'll show you from this side. Oh, look at that. All right, we're going to go to the other side and see what it looks like. All right, that's what popped out on that side. So now I'm, I'm on top of the bike here, and I'm going to slide it right through and look at that. Boom. Threads came right out. Again, you immediately replace. This is the OEM. We replaced it with the all thread here on the other side. So that's the most effective way to do it. Don't overdo it. You don't need to do anything crazy. You do not want to damage any of these threads, especially the OEM. All right, so this is the correct way that this is going to go on. So what we have is we have these little spacer things doing their little spacer thing, and then it's gonna fit right like that. And then this is gonna be mounted right on here on that open. So again, we're on the brake side right now because there's no need to cut anything on this side. Um, so that's where we're gonna start. We're not gonna over tight anything. The thing that we're gonna monitor is have an even amount of thread on this side and even amount on the other side. That is our goal. All right, I wanted to show you guys what I did. You see how we got about, I don't know, maybe an inch, inch and a half on this side. So what I did was I came to the other side and I put the spacer in, and again, I got about an inch and a half on this side, and I put the bolt on to stop it, so that's as far as it's gonna go. Now, whenever we put them on on either side, it's gonna be super loose, because we're basically gonna have to tighten these at the same time so that the they don't spin when I'm trying to tighten it, because it would be very easy. See how that's just spinning on the bolt? Just spinning right in there. You could, you could accidentally change the length there. So again, Definitely worth noting, this is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go back to the brake side. All right, we're back on the brake side. See that? Perfect. Now, we don't wanna cut off our ability to access this bolt. So this is the part of the frame that's connected to the engine again. Just like back here, it's supporting the engine. This is actually connected to the engine. So we're gonna remove this bolt and then we're actually gonna put that right side cage on. So I don't know if it's gonna be the shorter or the longer version, but just like here, we've got the crush washer, and then we're gonna put the bolt on, and then just like here, we got the crush washer and the spacer. So again, that's, if you forget, uh, all you have to do is just remember that we got the spacer, crush washer, hex bolt, spacer, crush washer, hex bolt. No, no not too crazy. Here, come here. For you to be able to pull it out. Look at that. All right. It doesn't look like anything shifted, but it's definitely not perfect, the thread going in there. So here is what I am going to do. I'm going to drop this thread down in here like that. And I'm gonna go like this. And I'm gonna see if it fits. As they say, if the shoe fits. There we go. Now it's actually threading in. Cool. All right, so that's the issue. So, word to the wise. Do not use what I initially told you to use. Use something shallow with an extension because it'll. I was trying to put pressure on the bolt to actually meet the threads and I couldn't because it was slipping all the way down that spark plug socket. So you need to use something shallow. Okay, now I know. Now I have this threaded in, I'm gonna come back to the other side here and then uh, actually line it up. All right, this is definitely gonna be a problem with some of you because it is challenging. Okay, so one of the bolts has a little rubber ring, I forget what it's called, um, but this is a specific type of hex bolt. It has a rubber ring around it. So what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to hold the threads with pliers on the other side and fasten that to a length that you are happy with because this is gonna stay, stay really tight. If you have two bolts that are not threaded like that with this little rubber to hold in place, if you do that, then it's gonna be incredibly difficult for you, if at all, for you to tighten both sides. So the reason this is here, because the first side, it's almost as if you are presetting the length that you want, and then that will stay tight. As you tighten the other side, it won't unthread itself. Very, very difficult to wrap your head around when you're just flying by the seat of your pants. So again, we're going to preset the length of this all thread, 
that we are happy with by holding the opposite side with pliers and tightening this down and then you're going to tighten the other side. All right, so as you can see here, we got this plastic rubber type that's securing it to the threads. Because it's secured to the threads, we can thread the other side without this unthreading itself. I was wondering why one side had the rubber piece and the other didn't. You can see in here, it is securing it to the threads. We're gonna to go to the other side. It's actually going to let us tighten it down. The alleged no cut. We obviously know that that is not true. I'm going to remove this piece and we're gonna make a cut here and here. Ooh, whoa! All right, important. Um, but actually, um, I want it to be perfect. You can see how nothing's exposed here. I'm gonna make sure that nothing's exposed on the all thread on the other side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this thing with all my might and not let it turn. Is you don't want it sticking out to catch your leg. So again, you're setting the length of that all thread. See that, boom, barely anything and nothing. That's what you're trying to do. So everything is fairly loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get these frame bolts seated well where the crossbar would go. It would fit perfectly if I was going to install the crossbar. Um, the timing to do this would be you don't want these be all the way tight yet things would still be a little bit loose and you would connect this or what you do is you'd pre-connect it on one side and when you set up the other side you would thread it through but um, but what you don't want to do is tighten everything and then try to install it so this would just be part of the process um, it looks like uh, what a jigsaw user would do you, anyway sorry Adobe Moto didn't mean to steal your joke one of the last pieces to the puzzle here by the way you cannot put the belly fairings back on they do not fit so something to be aware of some of you don't even have it there's a little hole right here and what you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up that you got to put some pressure on it to get it to start going in there I'm gonna switch sides here so I can see now it's sitting flush we're gonna do that to three more all right ladies and gentlemen I went with the no crossbar you have to remove those belly fairings but here is the Z400 with the impact tech that's the install the tricks of the trade everything you need to know some takeaways are the all thread uh, it can be scary when you do it at first and also you want to make sure you don't have anything exposed on either side you can see that both are perfect um, the black and white actually looks really freaking good. I'm happy.